Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. This week we're talking about Halloween and how to get rid of those pesky things we like to call resin traps. And you see here we've got a couple body parts that I'm working on for a uh, custom model. And uh, I'm putting some holes in the legs, not the arms. The arms are just under the size, which I would advise hollowing. Um, and of course those little tiny pieces and super thin pieces there, definitely don't advise it. Uh, it's just not enough material to bother with in the first place, and it, it's not worth it. Trying to figure out where to put a drain hole there is just going to be a pain. Anyway, back to the leg. We're talking about resin traps, and the reason I brought that up is because hollowing sometimes will create pockets of air, which will create a trap of resin because the resin doesn't have any place to go, because you don't really have a logical place to put a drain hole. Drain holes usually need to be put somewhere where you're not going to really care about there being a hole there, Hence, usually why I tend to put them on the very bottom, usually in peg holes, around the very feet, um, joining areas, that sort of thing. That, to me, makes the most sense. You could hollow out the arm and block the bottom just to hollow out that chunky part. But honestly, it's no bigger than a 32 millimeter, some 32 millimeter miniature. And so honestly, I feel like it's not worth your time. Again, a lot of work for nothing. But we're talking about blocking because we want to get rid of these resin traps. So if we go over to our blocking tool under our Halloween tab and we click on the model we want to select and then we click on the blockers, we can add these geometrical balls, squares, or cylinders, which will in turn block portions of the geometry. And I'm going to go back and forth this a little bit because the process can be heavy when it does the rebuild of the hollowing and then you got to move the drain holes around depending on where you're putting your uh, points. Essentially what you want to do is you want to find out as it builds where the drain holes are not going to get to, where there's going to be suspension of fluid away from the rest of the model, like these pockets here on the side of the uh, leg, and then you're going to want to get rid of them. So you're going to want to use the conventional looking shapes there you've got in the corner. You can place them, then you can stretch them around, you can move them, you can duplicate them in order to block off the areas that you want to block off. And this is pretty much the way you're gonna wanna go up and down the model and you're gonna use the layer slider just like you would when you're checking supporting. And in this case, you're just gonna be going up and down and looking to see where you might have a resin trap. Now again, a resin trap is something to find is like I said before, it's a pocket of air or area of the model that is going to be suspended away from the model that doesn't have access to a drain hole. So it's going to create two problems. One, suction. Two, it's going to create a stored pocket of resin that may not, because of the vacuum properties that are created in there, recess back into the rest of the model and drip out the bottom. You may actually just have a pocket of fluid there that when you go to clean it, you're just going to get like a, a, a little, like a, a, a decent amount of resin is going to be stored up in there. And that's going to be bad. You need, you really want to get that out as well because I, I've seen models that are months to years old that if they're not cured and cleaned properly internally, they can still crack and weep a long time after being finished. So definitely want to make sure that you avoid traps and resin traps and, and, hole and, and places that won't reach the holes very well. And again, this is really all just to avoid that nasty problem. You may not have to do it too much on every single part. There, there might not even be a need for it at all. You may need to just put the drain holes right at the back where it's first going to make contact and then kind of move your way up. On some parts, though, you're going to find it's more than necessary to put blocking in place to make sure that you don't have that issue. Now, what I'm also noticing is the back of this leg here where the foot touches. These kind of got like goat feet. Um, they're like mecha goat feet. And uh, there's some pockets back there. Now, I put some drain holes in the piece to try to alleviate that. But I feel like we're going to have to try and block them. And I'm going to go back and forth here a little bit and demonstrate different ways that you can kind of adjust this. And I'll explain as I go along. And of course... You know, it's not very exciting doing blocking stuff, but it's a necessary evil if you're going to do hollowing properly. I've heard a lot of folks talk about how you shouldn't hollow resin models 
because of the difficulty with things like weeping. Well, this is because their resin hollowing isn't done properly. If you have a lot of these resin traps or suction cups, you're not only going to create a harder print that's going to have a much harder time getting off the build, you're going to waste resin that's going to get stuck in these little traps and you're going to have this corrosive property of this resin that's going to sit inside your finished pieces for a long time and then it's eventually going to come out and you're going to be really upset about it when you find your finished painted piece weeping resin out of its face. Because um, I've seen stuff like that that happens. Um, that's why it's really important that you make sure when you're done, and this is why the drain hole sizes kind of need to be at least between two to three millimeters at minimum. Um, and then I try to put at least one bigger one down there so I can use my UV probe and I will actually put it inside the piece and I will internally cure that with a little UV probe that I've created using a tiny little UV light on the end of a wire which I then have attached to a switch just using some solder and um, you just flick that on and it uses a tiny little coin battery uh, which then cures the inside of the object. Now I, I've, I've built a few of these I think we have about three or four of them right now that we use and um, although the battery dies pretty fast because the UV light does use a decent amount of battery uh, it does a really good job of curing the internal piece. Now, of course, you can also use a handheld UV flashlight uh, that will also cure if the hole is large enough. You can sh just shine that in the inside and that will do uh, a decent job of curing the inside of the piece as well. Then when you do your external curing in like your cure machine or however you do your external cure, um, just make sure you cure the parts a little longer than you normally would. So if your normal cure time is recommended to about one to three minutes, I usually uh, cure hollow parts for about 10, 15, and sometimes even more um, in the range of 20 minutes, just depending on how big they are and how much material is actually being cured into the process. And on occasion, I'll take those and I will even flip them around, even if I have the you know, rotational unit working. Um, on the cure, I'll, I'll sometimes just you know flip it upside down because the, the reflectional disc disc don't, that doesn't work that well. Um, when you do your holes, remember there's a few ways you can do this. There's the holes with the caps. There's the the holes without the caps. There's just general holes. Um, I usually just do holes. I don't keep the caps. And again. You can choose to do this if you're using the premium or pro version of Lychee Slicer. I believe you have access to all three of those options. Somebody said hollowing is not a free feature. I'm not sure what the status on that is. You'd have to look on their um, uh, product page to see what the differences between the different feature versions are. Pretty much it was my understanding there are a few things that are stuck behind the, um, the paywall on that. So... Um, I mean, I have an episode on how to use Microsoft 3D Builder to do your hollowing. So if you're interested in learning how to do it that way, um, that is an option for you. <laughs> it will work. Okay, from here, we're going to speed up this next segment uh, because this is a little boring. It's just me going back and forth and adjusting the blocker shapes. Um, if you take a look at this while you're... Um, waiting for the next bit of dialogue, you'll notice that I do eventually end up solidifying the entire back of the hoof area of the foot. Um, but I'll explain a little bit more of that when we come back in just a sec.
Okay, and we are back from that. And as you can see, like I said, the end result was me creating this slope here where it's not hollow in the back. And gradually, we allow that area to hollow up into the leg itself. And that creates a better um, flow piece in order for both fluid and air to flow through the drain holes. And of course, we have you know, our corresponding holes on top. And that allows for good air passage and liquid passage through the top and the bottom. Now, of course, when you go and do your whole capping, removing process, whatever, uh, it does kind of like remove and replace the original. So you can, of course, keep a duplicate. You can create a copy and then you can just hide it in your object inspector. Um, boom, just put it away. That is an option or if you don't care, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't usually save them all the time, but occasionally if it was like a lot of work to get it done the way I want, um, I will save a copy. And of course you can leave yourself notes so you understand what it is, and why you have it there. And more than likely we're gonna wind up doing the same thing to the other leg too. So anyway, it's gonna be, you know, the same process. And then of course, when you're done, you would just click on the hole button and it's gonna pop all those holes out and then you're left with a nice hollow model with a bunch of holes in it and it's ready for you to support and go um, anyway so that's how to avoid resin traps that's how to avoid resin collecting pooling and suction cupping that sort of thing hope this helped you guys on your hollowing journey in 3d resin printing if you guys enjoyed this video please click that like button don't forget to leave some comments and hey Click the bell if you want notifications when I release episodes, which is usually about once a week. See y'all soon.